everybody. Hello. I hope you can find a seat. We can grab a couple more seats if we know we need them. You're also welcome to stand. Um, I want to thank you all for coming to what is our first Brodsky Gallery event of the year. Um, this features, as many of you know, photography by Cameron Hart and writing by Sierra Ortiz Blanes that helps document the experiences of Puerto Rican people displaced by Hurricane Maria. The show is primarily inside. I know some of you have already seen it, uh, seen parts of it. Um, we do have this representative photo here to give you um, some taste of what, what we'll be talking about tonight and looking at. Um, I'm going to introduce Sierra very briefly. Um, and she'll tell you more about this show and more about Cameron. And, and then uh, Cameron will also speak. Um, they're laughing at me. I don't know why. <laughs> um, uh, Cameron will also speak. Um, there will also be an, um, a microphone available for questions and answers, yes. Um, and then afterward, we'll all go inside and we have really good food and you can look at the work and we have wine and we hope you'll stick around and talk to each other and think about this uh, show. So in February of this year, Sierra launched the Voices of Maria project at the Philadelphia Citizen. It's a multimedia project that profiles Puerto Ricans living in Philadelphia who are displaced by Hurricane Maria. It's part text, part video, part photo, and the intent of the project is really, um, in Sierra's words, to hand um, uh, to Maria's evacuees the opportunity to share their perspectives. So it's, it's collaborative in, in that way. Uh, here at Writer's House, we, we, we were so impressed by this project and by Sierra's work, which is deeply engaged, um, that we named her our 2018-2019 Junior Fellow to help her continue this work um, with, with a, a modest uh, platform. Um, the idea is she can uh, structure a few different kinds of events here at Writer's House throughout this year. Um, yeah, we're thrilled. Um, and to quote Sierra here, the goals were to further empower e evacuees to inform Philadelphia of the hidden refugee crisis and to help drive the city to action. So those are the stakes here, those are the terms. And so tonight's event is part of that ongoing work and we're honored, we're, we're truly honored to help um, share these stories, to share in them, to help draw attention to the fact that this is a continuing crisis. This isn't the past. I, I know that Sierra herself would have been deeply engaged in this work without any kind of support from an institution. Um, she's deeply passionate about storytelling as a medium for change and about how there is an immediate necessity to tell stories and to tell stories now. So please help me welcome her to the podium. Good night. Wait, I'm gonna. I don't want to have to, oh, never mind. Um, so, first off, I'm using my phone, trying to be eco-friendly. So, uh, first off, thank you to everyone who is here today. Uh, it means the world that the evacuees, the Puerto Rican evacuees, featured in Las Voces de Maria, hi, Dad, um, are getting the visibility they deserve. Um, thank you to my parents and my sisters for coming here all the way from home. And thanks to my grandparents, who unfortunately couldn't be here today without my family, without the consciousness to give back, as cliche as that might sound, to my home, to my patria. I would not be here today doing this work. Uh, it's going to be a laundry list of thank yous, so please bear with me for a little. Uh, thank you, Adi who's not here, because he's in India, for being my rock throughout this process, whether you are close or far away. Thank you, Cameron, who captured these stories with a compassion behind the lens I've rarely seen, and who collaborated with me to bring this project uh, to life. Thank you to the citizen, to the Philadelphia citizen, for advocating for Puerto Rico by telling its stories. You know, Roxanne, Jordan, Larry, and Jamie, and Anissa, Las Voces de Maria would not exist without you. 
And thank you finally to all my friends and professors and acquaintances and colleagues uh, who have supported me and are here today. I see so many faces and I feel really, really supported. Um, and thank you Writers House for hosting this event and holding the space for us today. It's hard being far from a home that has been systemically colonized and broken. There's always an economic crisis, an environmental issue, a political controversy waiting to be solved. This was exacerbated after Maria, an almost biblical storm. The place that made us ceased to exist as we knew it. I'm sorry. We couldn't, and for a while, without electricity or cell phone signal, we couldn't even ask what people home needed from us. For Puerto Ricans outside of the island, if we have the option to go back, if we have the resources, the thought that we could do something is always looming in the back of our minds. It's permanent geographic dislocation. Las Voces de Maria has been my post-hurricane relief work. After the storm, I could not chop trees with a machete like my father did to clear paths so people could leave their houses or feed the desperately hungry in the mountains or hand out bottles of water in sweltering powerless San Juan neighborhoods. I couldn't fix the overaching systemic issues that plague us and that led us to this crisis in the first place. But I could, 1,500 miles away, give a platform to Puerto Ricans who were on their way here. As a Puerto Rican with the privilege of having a roof and electricity, as a Puerto Rican who speaks English, as a Puerto Rican with a platform, it was a responsibility. Puerto Ricans from all over the island and from all walks of life share their stories in Las Voces. We met in hotels, cramped basements, relatives and friends' apartments, strangers' apartments, coffee shops. The evacuees sat for hours with me, unraveling their lives inside the gray spaces of our local and federal bureaucracies, nonprofit and governmental alike, which are leaving them homeless, distressed, and hungry. They share their stories, often for the first time. It took a shameful amount of time for City Hall and other big players in town to actually listen to Puerto Ricans and to declare a post-Hurricane Maria evacuee crisis in the city. Philadelphia has the second largest Boricua community in the US with 135,000 Puerto Ricans. We represent 8% of the city's population and three quarters of the Latina population. But 67% of us in Philadelphia live in poverty, often so deep north in our city's neighborhoods that no one hears them when they speak, whether it be English or Spanish. They are, by many metrics, the poorest demographic of the city, often disenfranchised by systemic discrimination and linguistic barriers. After Maria, many Puerto Ricans arrived from the island without knowing a word of English and without any belongings or money. Still today, many have no winter clothes and are getting by on a few meals a day. Many are still living in unsafe and cramped conditions and stay wherever they can find space. Some have found lodging with relatives, and some thankfully have found their own homes. Not many families remain in the temporary shelters set up by partnerships between local government, FEMA, and companies in the area compared to how many there were. But those government-affiliated arrangements are constantly in flux and in threat of being taken away. And others simply are still living in homeless shelters. There still really hasn't been a comprehensive and effective response to the evacuee crisis that came from the city and state government. It's largely been Puerto Ricans caring for each other and their allies. This shouldn't come as a surprise though. Just look at what's been happening this past year. Our dead have been denied. The aid we needed never really came. Disaster capitalists have swooped in, looking to make profits from our tragedies. Puerto Rico is still struggling to find its life and identity after Maria, and it will be doing so for a long time. At least 3,000 people passed away in Puerto Rico because of the hurricane's devastation, the destroyed infrastructure, and the government negligence. The evacuees who came here lost life as they knew it. However, these are not only sad stories, 
they are full of survival and hope and resilience. Maria has brought to life the strength that we have always carried within us. Evacuees are teaching in our public schools and cooking in local restaurants. They're involved in community groups and are vibrant members of their new neighborhoods. They have organized and spoken up about their conditions, demanding that FEMA and the government provide the support they need. They have breathed new life into Philadelphia as they build themselves back up to the nail. Maria, the biggest disaster in Puerto Rico's modern history, is best represented by Puerto Rican voices, not 10 second sound bites or statistics on mortality, infrastructure, and immigration. This reconstruction of narratives, like the reconstruction of our island, is vital to our healing process, and it belongs to us. And so, at its core, Las Voces is about giving and receiving agency. It's about accompanying and supporting Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans as they make a new life out of Maria's ashes. Our dead have names, our living have names, and faces, and stories, a few of which you can see exhibited here tonight. Our stories belong to us, and they are ours to tell, even if historically they always haven't been. Now, I'd like to turn the stage to you. This project, again, is about agency, an agency in telling our stories. I'd like to invite any Puerto Ricans in the audience who want to share their stories about Maria to come up here and speak or borrow a microphone from the person with the microphone. Good. Uh, and if there are any questions, um, now would be a great time to ask. And it's okay to not speak as well. I'm just holding the space. I don't know, should I leave time? Should I keep going? Okay, I'll keep going. Uh, every day, we are finding joy in being alive, in having survived, in being Puerto Rican, whatever that may look like. Love has guided this project. I dedicate Las Voces de Maria to those who left, those who stayed, and those who, come who will come back y a Puerto Rico, que no necesita volver a ponerse de pie, porque nunca se cayó. Um, yeah, so if anyone has questions or comments or concerns or anything, feel free to share them now or later or never. Um, up to you. <laughs> up to you. Uh, Can you hear from the photographer? Yes. He is coming. Uh, cool. So, so now, you know, um, I remember being in kindergarten and looking at my mom in the front row and being like, and now she's here and I'm like, right, mom? Um, yeah, so now without further ado, um, here comes Cameron Hart. He is originally from central Pennsylvania of a funnily named place called Jersey Shore, because it's, it's in central Pennsylvania. Um, he's a wonderful friend, and even more wonderful and talented photographer, uh, who chose to take this project, you know, already working full-time in Philadelphia without any stakes, and he stepped up and thought so critically about how he was going to be capturing the lives and the souls of the people in this work that have been constantly so dehumanized and, and so traumatized by the past year, the past century and a half, um, the past 500 years. Being Puerto Rican is a complicated and colonized experience. And that just came on top of this hurricane and, and it just all came bursting out. And having no necessarily any knowledge prior of the situation, he came and he stepped up and he did a beautiful role uh, capturing the people who, are, who were so graciously invited me to be a part of their lives and be a part of this project, and who I thank every day uh, that they decided to do that, because it's a very brave thing to tell your stories when no one wants to hear them, and when people can't necessarily understand them or where you're coming from. So, without further ado, Cameron. <laughs>
All right, hi. How you guys doing? Um, so I kind of want to paint a picture of what uh, these people had to go through, um, these photos inside. Um, so I just want you to imagine your life at this very moment. Um, imagine your home, uh, where you work, your friends, and your community. Um, imagine waking up tomorrow morning and your home is gone. Uh, you no longer have that job. Um, and your community is just completely uprooted and destroyed. Um, imagine through all that losing a loved one, maybe a pet or a child. Uh, the people in these stories of Las Vosos de Maria all face this, these circumstances in one way or another. Um, now I want you to imagine where you go from here. You have two options. One, to rebuild your home and your community uh, with little to no resources or help, um, or to move somewhere new and maybe have a fresh start. Um, you choose to move to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, well over 1,500 miles away from the place you call home with like a hope for an education for your children, a job for you, and maybe uh, a new place to call home. Um, in the past year, over 900 Puerto Ricans chose that second option and, and chose to come to Philadelphia. Um, have any of you ever moved to a new place? I certainly have in the last couple of years. I've moved uh, a lot of new places where I didn't know anybody. Um, it's scary, it's lonely, and it's very hard to adjust. Um, imagine moving somewhere where very few people speak your native language. Um, in that new place, your government gives you enough money to live in a hotel for a month. Um, and after that month is up, you need to find a place to live and a job and a place for your children to go to school. Um, all while navigating a very large and intimidating city like Philadelphia. Um, to add on to all of that, the media tension around Hurricane Maria subsides, uh, the relief efforts slow down, and your president claims that only 16 to 18 people died uh, during one of the most horrific hurricanes uh, Puerto Rico has ever seen. These people uh, really need our help um, more than we know. And I really want to encourage all of you as you go in there and read about um, their stories to put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself maybe what you could do to help. Um, we all have tools and resources to create change um, and it really just matters how and when we choose to use them. Um, you'll see these when you go inside. There's a bunch of uh, postcards and on the back we wrote out some of the uh, resources here locally to Philadelphia that you could um, maybe uh, reach out and help some Puerto Ricans that are, are living here now. And at the bottom we have our website where we uh, put the, the full stories in depth and a few more photos um, in addition to what's inside. Um, so please take some of these with you and, and hand them out to some friends, put them in your church, businesses, whatever you want to do. And last, I just want to thank the Kelly Writers House um, for hosting this event and funding our project. Uh, the Philadelphia Citizen who uh, really gave us the platform to publish our content, which uh, was kind of the start of all this. And then finally to CETA, because uh, no one, uh, none of this would be possible without your dedication and hard work and definitely keeping me in line. <laughs> so we really want to thank you guys for coming out. And uh, we have food inside, um, traditional Puerto Rican food and some drinks. and. Uh, yeah, come talk to us. Ask us your questions. We have plenty of food. Come on inside. <laughs> 